So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these two wooden sheaths. So for this project, I wanted to make two different type of sheets, one with a lighter wood that's contrasting to the handle, and one that was a darker wood that sort of matched the handle. So what I'm doing is resawing the curly maple and the Chechen lumber, just because I knew that it was going to be thinner and I didn't want to waste the wood milling it at the planer. After resawing it, the lumber was still a little rough, so I like to take it down to the final thickness of 3 8 at my drum sander. With the pieces to the final thickness, I can now go over to the table saw and cut them to their final width. As you can see here, I already had a plywood template made, so what I'm doing is measuring the length, setting my miter gauge to that length, which is I believe was 4 inches, and then I'm going to cut the pieces to the final length. Anytime that I cut pieces like this, I like to start by truing up the end before placing it up against the stop block. Now that the pieces are cut to their final size, I like to take a minute to look at the grain and just find the better looking sides that I know that I want facing out when this project is complete. So now that I know which sides those are, I'm going to put double sided tape on the inside faces and stick these together. That way when I shape them and cut them at the bandsaw, I'm cutting it on both pieces so they match exactly. And next I'm going to be using a sharp pencil to outline and trace from the template. With the templates traced on, I can head back over to the bandsaw and cut away the waste. With this project being so small, I didn't have a whole lot of room for error, so I played it as tight as I could to the line, making sure not to remove the line with the bandsaw blade. And next I used the disc sander to do the final shaping. When I made the plywood template, I wanted it to look just like the shape of the blade of the knife itself, uh, so that's what I got this shape from, but this is pretty much just, uh, it's up to your own creativity and what you think looks good. And the one area that I couldn't reach with the disc sander was the end grain, so I just used a chisel to clean that up. Before separating the two pieces, I marked the outside face with an O. That's just so when I uh, separate these two pieces to route the inside, I don't actually route the wrong face. So to trace the areas that I needed to remove with the router bit, I placed the blade inside of the sheath and then I traced it with the pencil. To make sure that I had a consistent gap all the way around, I put it about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Next I flipped the blade over and then traced the blade on the other part of the sheath. To remove the waste, I'm using an eighth of an inch spiral bit in my trim router. And to do this, I'm just going to put some tape on the sheath, stick it to my assembly table, and then I have two scrap pieces of wood that are the same exact thickness as the sheath, and then I'm just going to slowly remove the waste with the trim router, making sure to stay inside of the line. The two scrap pieces that are taped down to my assembly table help support the router because, again, this is a really tiny piece, and you can't, in my opinion, you can't route this away without some support pieces. The router bit left pretty ragged edges, and I couldn't get all the way up to the top, so I used my 8th inch chisel to clean that up. Uh, before removing the piece, since it was stuck down to my assembly table, I made sure that the, the blade fit and it was nice and snug. So with that half done, I remove it from the assembly table, stick the other piece down, and then remove the waste. Before applying any of the flocking or sealing the surface, I'm going to go ahead and put tape around the edge just so that I don't interfere with the glue surface when it comes time to gluing the sheath together. And since I'm using flocking, uh, they recommend that you seal the inside surface, so that's what I'm doing with some shellac, just applying a couple coats. So this is the first time that I've actually used any of the flock, and this uh, it's actually really nice. Uh, I was surprised with the outcome. Um, it's really easy to apply. As you can see, this is a two-part process. First, you apply the glue. Uh, this is the black glue uh, that the flock itself sticks to. And then you want to put the pieces inside of a little plastic bag like this and then just spray the flocking over it, let it dry, and then when you're done, just dust off the excess and the loose flock and it's good to go. Uh, even though I put tape around the edges, it still managed to creep under the tape. So I'm going to be using this sanding board with some sandpaper on it to remove that waste. And now we can go ahead and glue it up. When it came time to put the glue on, I barely put any glue on the surface because I didn't want any squeeze out for obvious reasons.
With this being such a small piece, I didn't have a way to get too many clamps on it without the piece moving, so I just did a rub joint until it started to tack up and it pretty much held on its own. Uh, so then I just put a couple pieces of tape on it to make sure that it didn't move, and it worked pretty well. So the final design element was to put a chamfer on all four edges of the sheath. And to do this, I'm just using a chamfering bit at the router table. And since these pieces are really small, I'm using the push pads to make sure that my fingers don't get in the way. And to play this safe, I ended up routing it in two different passes, raising the bit the second time to remove the rest of the waste. To finish sand the surface, I'm just rubbing it back and forth on a sheet of 180 grit sandpaper. And my go-to finish on something like this is just a simple wipe on poly. Since the knife handle didn't have a real glossy sheen to it, I wanted to match that, so I only applied two coats of this satin wipe on. All right, so this is what we have. This is the curly maple handle. It's a nice contrasting appearance to the Coca Bolo handle on the knife. Um, it's got really nice figure, and the fit is really good. Uh, and then you got the other one, which I believe is pronounced Chechen. Uh, it's uh, similar in appearance to the Coca Bolo. The fit is a little tighter on this one, so there was probably some inconsistencies when I was routing it, but it still fits really well, doesn't come out, and uh, you know, it's a nice looking wood as well. Uh, let me know in the comments below which one you think came out better and which one matches the knife better. Uh, and I appreciate you guys watching. If you're not already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next build video.